Hey folks, wanted to record a quick video for you today to talk about an upcoming change to how you can enable premium capabilities for a workspace and subsequently an app in Power BI. So for those of you who are using premium capacity or premium per user today, or may have an A SKU for an embedded scenario that you're using to back a workspace, the process for that has been uh, the same for the last few years. You would go to the workspace settings and under premium you would enable it by flipping a switch here to turn it on or off. So by default you would have it off. But if you enable it for a workspace and turn it on you would then have the capacity you could choose from this drop down. Now this drop down would include any SKU that you may have purchased whether it be and have access to a sign whether it's a P SKU, an EM SKU or an A SKU and with the recent introduction of premium per user, that would also be an option in this dropdown as well to enable that quote unquote capacity for your workspace and then to hit save. What we found during the preview period and subsequent GA of premium per user is that for organizations that already had premium capacity for their users, some users found this confusing and there was uh, an ask to have a better way to kind of differentiate for the workspace if they're enabling a specific type of premium license for that particular workspace. So what we've done is we've made a change. So now when you're using premium, by default, you'll have pro as the license mode for your workspace. If you don't have the ability to enable any sort of premium capabilities for a workspace, these subsequent options will be grayed out. However, if you do, we've now broken out the different premium options into three specific categories. One is if you have a premium per user license and can assign a workspace and may uh, have workspace assignment permissions, you may enable premium per user for that workspace. And then the other items around the storage format and the workspace connection for the XML endpoint show up as normal. If you have the ability to enable a P or EM SKU, for a workspace, you would choose premium per capacity. Or if you have an existing workspace that is already backed by a premium capacity, this is the option that would be selected by default when you look at it later this week into next week. So you see that with premium per capacity, I have the ability to assign one of two P SKUs as the capacity that I'd like to back this particular workspace. And we no longer have in the dropdown the premium per user capacity as that's now broken out into a separate license mode. The embedded option is if you have an A SKU that you're using and is backing a particular workspace for an embedded scenario. So it will only be A SKUs that you can see in this particular dropdown. This is important to remember because we've actually now for the first time separated out the P SKUs from the A SKUs or the P and EM SKUs from the A SKUs in terms of what you can see in the dropdown. Once you select this option, you simply hit save and then it's treated the same way it is uh, previously in terms of the functionality in the workspace. That's an upcoming change that's going to be rolled out to all the folks by the end of April. Uh, you'll see it in your uh, particular tenant. And again, if you don't have any premium capabilities under that premium tab, you'll see pro selected by default, and then you won't have any of the other options to choose. But hopefully this helps organizations better understand what is running in a particular workspace and what type of premium license is required to access content in there. Thanks very much for your time.